So last week I did a video for this UL Caliburn kit and it taught me a lot. It, it taught me not to just judge books by their cover. It, it taught me to be a little bit, maybe a little bit more optimistic about things because this Caliburn kit arrived and like a lot of pod systems that arrive, I kind of just wrote it off as like, oh look, there's another pod system. Pod systems now are like sub ohm tanks were in like 2015, 2016. They're just flooding the market. And I didn't necessarily do a video for every sub ohm tank that came out in 2015 and 2016. In fact, there were lots of times where I did a video where it's like, okay, here's like eight sub ohm tanks. And so a lot of these pod systems have been coming in and I'm like, oh great. Oh, Oh, look, another pod system. Oh, this one looks neat. Oh, this one doesn't. Oh, look, another pod system. Well, the Caliburn taught me that I shouldn't do that because I had zero expectations for this thing and it just completely blew me away. I mean, the quality of vape from it is stellar and I almost didn't even give it a chance. And that's messed up, man. So after having that epiphany and thinking, well, maybe maybe some of these other pod systems that I've kind of just been getting and like putting in a cabinet, maybe they're good too. So I decided to dig out this guy. This is the IPV Aspect. It's real weird, <laughs> man. It's just it looks weird, it feels weird, it fits together weird, the button is weird, it's got a weird chip in it, there's just, there's so many weird things about this. So this is the black one I've been using for the last few days, but I do have this one that is more of a, I don't know, steel looking, rose goldish looking device. There's not going to be a whole lot to see up close, but I want to show you how we set it up, so... Yeah, caught it. Wow. So yeah, here we go. IPV aspect. We're going to tear it open. We're going to set it up. There you go. There's your pod. Not much to it. This is the one. This is the one. This is this is the one I've opened. It's the gray one. There is a rose gold with this, the gray one with this, the light gray one with this, and then this one with the red. Of course, I have this black one with black down here, which isn't on any of these, so I couldn't tell you how many variations there are of the aspect. There appears to be a bunch. Here's that golden colored device. I'm gonna set that aside just for now, just to see what else is in here. One USB cord, one instruction manual, and one mod, and one pod. That's what you're getting. Now please go away. A few quick specs right out of the gate. It's got a 750 ma or milliamp hour internal battery. The pod is a two mil stainless steel 316 one ohm with organic cotton wick on the inside. And their big claim to fame on this IPV aspect is that it uses the Yihi uh, SXK1 chipset, which is what allows it to go from high wattage mode to low wattage mode. So, sorry, it's not high wattage and low wattage, it's high wattage and medium wattage. So the way that works is you do like a one, two, three to turn it on and it's gonna do this little thing. And these little lights here for your battery level indicator, top notch. Four lights represent perfectly what your battery's going through. All lit up, 100%. Three lights is 75%, two lights is 50%, one light is 25%, no lights is charge your damn device. I don't know if this has like a retro feel to it or like a sci-fi feel to it. I don't know if they were trying to go for like a fancy high-end like key fob car type of feel to it. I want to believe that this is made out of stainless steel because it's so weighty. It just feels real weighty in the hand. And right out of the box, your pod is going to have all sorts of like uh, saran wrap trimmings on it. <laughs> can't, can't think of another word to describe this. And apart from the saran wrap trimmings, there is a little sticker here on the bottom that you have to remove. And now your pod is almost ready to go. Just wanted to show you real quickly right here. This is the AFC on these pods. And what it is is there's an airflow hole. There's an airflow hole right behind this hole opening. That's the airflow hole. And then there's this little piece of rubber that kind of sits in these two rails right here. And when you want to adjust your airflow, you kind of, I at least have to like stick a tool or stick a fingernail in here. And then you can slide that rubber uh, up to close it completely off or it's impossible to see, but you can do that like kind of close off the airflow, maybe just a little bit if you wanted to. This is kind of obnoxiously annoying to use. It doesn't really stay in place very well. But I mean, shout out to IPV for putting an AFC on a pod. Your contacts on the bottom are kind of sitting on this rubber stopper that you're gonna peel up just one end of it. And it's a little bit finicky and tricky to get in here, but you can peel up this one end just like that. Don't go any farther and that is going to 
reveal your juice fill hole right there. One singular hole. Always kind of a huge bummer because when you're filling up a container with liquid, the air needs to go somewhere. I feel like I've been ranting about this for way too long, but the air needs to go somewhere too. If you have a really, really thin, thin bottle tip or even using a syringe, you'll be able to fill this up no problems at all. Using any other kind of bottles, sometimes even those pointy chubby gorilla bottles, especially things like glass dripper bottles, it's gonna be a bitch. There's just no way around it. So right now I have some minimal berry lemonade with this kind of tip on there. I'm gonna stick this into the juice fill hole and then I'm gonna hold it, I don't know, kind of exactly like this. Maybe give it just a little bit of an angle here, but I'm just gonna try to squeeze this juice in here. Yeah, there it goes. Look at the juice going. And you need to fill up both chambers. There's like a, there's like a coil head that kind of runs through the middle of this. These two chambers are connected, but it takes a little bit of tilting and moving around to get your pod completely full, especially with just one juice fill hole. But we are close and that is completely full. And it managed to stay fairly clean in the process. Not every time you fill this up is it going to be that clean of a process. And this is just another weird thing real quick. The pod doesn't just slide in here, uh, you know, with tolerances. You can put it in here and you can see this pod just wiggles all over the place. Wiggles this way, wriggles up and down, like backward and forward. In fact, when you're putting this pod in here, you kind of need to direct it into the correct spot. You have to make sure it doesn't get hung up on this edge. You kind of have to make sure it doesn't get hung up on that edge either. And then it does all eventually snap in there. The snap isn't eh, very satisfying, but there is a little bit of a snap. Okay, two more things while we're down here. You're gonna notice there's a lot of space around your pod. That's where the airflow is coming in. The way that this is kind of all put together is the there's just a big space and it's gonna be difficult to see. You can see it IRL, you know, real easy. And you can see it when you're feeling it right here. There's just big gap all the way around, big gap all the way around, and that gap runs through the device. So that's where your airflow is going to be coming from. It's a three on, three off. So I think it's on right now, actually. One, two, three, and there it's going to turn off. One, two, three, and now it's gonna turn on. And if you give it a five really fast, you can change between the medium wattage and the high wattage mode. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Ah, now we're in normal wattage mode. When the two middle lights light up, that means we're in normal wattage mode. If we do it another five, one, two, three, four, five, these lights are gonna light up and that means we're in high wattage mode. How warm do you want your vape to be? You want it to be in high wattage mode? It's gonna be warmer. You wanna run it in standard wattage mode? It's gonna be a little bit cooler. I honestly haven't felt a lot of differences between these two modes, if I'm being real honest, but the two modes are there for those that want to take advantage of them. And lastly, what is this? What is this design choice here? This might be getting a little nitpicky, but what the fuck is the point of this? Maybe because they wanted it to look like a key fob, they kind of want you to put this on your keys and have it hanging from your keys? I, I, I don't know. It's literally just aesthetics. You could put it on a lanyard, maybe, if you wanted to, if you wear your pod system on a lanyard. Look, I'm not judging people that do, but that's never my first choice. So yeah, that's all there really is to this thing. It's not super complicated. I just wanted you to see how kind of weird, odd, and goofy it is. I swear, every time I see it, it looks like, like a vintage sci-fi robot, which should be appealing to me. I just, I just don't really like the way this thing looks. <laughs> anyway, that's enough nitpicky. Let's go vape it. Can I throw this back to myself? Ha! Normal view. Normal view. It's just so weird, but it vapes really well. The airflow on it full open is a little bit more of like a real restricted lung hit, but it, it reminds me of like the stock Mepod airflow, how you can kind of do a little bit of a restricted lung hit and do a little bit of like a pretty good mouth to lung. If this was an auto draw mouth to lung, I think it would be too open, but because you press a button to get it to activate, it can be a little bit more open and you can still do a fairly solid mouth to lung. And I'm a bit of a mouth to lung, I don't know, enthusiast. And so I'm just really, I'm really hard on airflows and really hard on mouth to lung because I have a very particular mouth to lung that I really, really love. And I can kind of get a pretty satisfying mouth to lung out of this little IPV aspect. It's not flawless. It's not like the best mouth to lung I've ever had, but it's good and it's tasty and it's satisfying. And like I said, you can kind of do a restricted lung hit as well. 
it's nice and tasty and satisfying. You do have to slipstream it just a little bit. I have to let a little bit more air in my mouth than is just coming through that coil head, like through that through that pod, but it can still be a little bit of a restricted lung hit. Now, as for everything else about this IPV aspect, it's, it's built well. It feels weighty. It feels real nice. I wish the button was clickier. I wish the button was more responsive, but otherwise it's a fine button. It's a fine little pod mod pod i mean i've said this before but when does a pod not become a pod anymore but yeah it's satisfying and that's really the best thing that the ipv aspect has going for it is the vape from it is great it is a real nice pod i keep wanting to say coil head but it's a real nice pod. And if we're gonna talk about like other devices that are kind of in this same category, like the Orion, the Orion Q, I like both of those more than I like this. I kind of also like that Inakin DV pod a little bit more than I like this, but I genuinely think like for a first showing, the first pod system from IPV, which IPV have been around in the industry for years and years, their first pod system out of the gate it's a pretty solid offering. Aesthetics and buttons and weirdness and shapes aside, the one thing that they did get very, very right, which is the most important thing in my opinion from a pod system, is that final vape. It's a really nice, satisfying experience. IPV just did a really great job with these pods. I wish I could take this IPV aspect pod and put it in literally anything else any other battery any other mod any other anything because i really just don't like the way this aspect looks and that's a completely personal nitpicky subjective thing to say because otherwise it's a pretty damn good vape so brass tacks you're gonna need your vape budget hands if you want to check out the ipv aspect no not really Clicking around the internet, I found it for about 35 bucks, most everywhere. 35 bucks gets you a mod, a mod, a device, a micro USB cable, and one singular pod. But 35 bucks, not really vape budget hands, not really gonna break the bank. Again, this is something, if you have no pod systems, it's gonna vape real well, but it, it, IMO, I think there's better uh, pod systems out there, things like the, the Orion and the Orion Q. There's some other stuff coming up soon that I think is also gonna be very, very cool. And I think the IPV aspect is kinda just gonna be that weird clunky robot looking thing just kind of in the middle of all of it. Doesn't really stand out, but it's not awful either. Aliens game, let's play the Aliens game or the FDA game now where they come and take everything I have. And I have nothing left to vape. Is the IPV aspect gonna be my first pod system? No, I mean it's I mean, just no. I don't think any other way to say that. It, no, it wouldn't be. There are a lot of pod systems I would buy before I would buy this one. But that, with that said, this vapes well, and now I'm rambling, and it is what it is. Links are not allowed in the description, so you're going to have to use your Google Foo. But thank you so much for watching, everybody. These are my Chris Angel magician hands. Ready? Just make it disappear. Oh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Let's keep on vaping.